So what I'm going to look at here is the basics of convert to mesh and a little bit of exporting and importing of those meshes. We'll start by creating a standard Bryce sphere. Now the thing about the standard Bryce sphere is it's a special object. No matter how close you bring the camera to the surface of the sphere you will not see any polygons. And the reason for that is it's been generated mathematically. It doesn't exist as a mesh. Now if you want it to be a mesh you can go File, Export Object, we'll say Sphere 4, that's fine, File, Import Object, bring it back in. I just left it at the default format, we won't look at file formats at the moment, they just use 3DS. So if I plot render that now, you can see that it's become faceted. And that's the nature of meshes. To overcome that fat faceted appearance, you have the options when you have a mesh to smooth it. Now when you load with 3DS format, it comes in unsmooth, which is why you see all the facets. If you smooth it, it takes a few moments and you get to set the angle beyond which it uh, it smooths and the angle um, below which it doesn't smooth so you can have sharp corners on things you'll see that its appearance now is quite similar to this but this is as a mesh object it will behave differently from a Bryce sphere so uh, and and the, the mesh smoothing in Bryce has some issues, but I, I suppose that's beyond the scope of what I want to talk about here. I could go on about that for uh, for quite a while, and I don't want to. I want to stay on topic for once. So if I take this sphere now and copy and paste it, and just uh, lift it up a bit, and then drag and drop over the top and group it, file, you'll see the export option is now greyed out. You can't export groups as they are. That needs to be converted to a mesh but we don't have the option to convert it to a mesh because these spheres are not combined in any way. Now if I was to select the spheres by using the sphere selection rather than the group I can modify the attributes of each of the spheres to positive and now if I select the group I've got the option of converting those to a mesh and once those are converted to a mesh even though in the wireframe we still see them as standard Bryce spheres a mesh has been generated which can be exported now as an object in itself. But there are a few considerations before we get into that, so I'm just going to delete that and we'll create something else that uh, will help explain what's going on here. So I'll create a sphere and modify the attributes as I did before to positive. Then I'll copy and paste that same sphere and I'll just lift it up a bit and I'll modify the attributes of this one to negative. I can now perform a boolean operation on these when they're grouped. At the moment they're not grouped and as such this negative sphere doesn't look any different from the positive sphere but if I group the pair of them together, not with the ground, if I group the pair of spheres together and now render you'll see that the negative sphere has cut into the positive sphere and this will be handy for explaining a few things I think so I'll just drag that across there and I'm going to copy and paste so I've got a few of these to work with how many am I going to need? well the answer to that is dependent on how many options I've got here for selected level of detail. So there's five options there, so I need five sets of these, and you'll see why in a second. So I'll select my first, and, and I go into this option for the level of detail for selected, and change it to eight. So you can see now in the wireframe has been simplified, and this wireframe um, is the thing that dictates for most of the uh, Bryce primitives here on the shelf what level of detail you get in the exported model. I'll show you what that looks like and then it'll make sense. Uh, metaspheres are slightly different. They're handled in a different way and uh, that, it'll, it'll get complicated. So I won't, I won't cover that in this video. I'll think on and try and make another one to cover the more complex uh, aspects of this process. So these are grouped and the boolean and now I can convert it. So I'll convert it and that's generated a mesh object and the complexity of that mesh object was determined by the selection here of the uh, of 8 which is the level of detail for the wireframe so now when that's selected and I'll go file export object and I'll save that it says it's called mesh 5 so file import object straight away like I say you have other import export objects in terms of files but uh, 
that, that, that starts to get a bit complicated again. I'm trying to keep things simple. So you can see now quite a radical difference between these two objects. That was the object that's uh, converted and exported and that's what's come in. Now I'll go to this one now and we'll do the same thing again. So selected 16, so that's a slightly more complex mesh. Convert file export object, that's called mesh 7. File import object, get hold of mesh 7. Pop it above that one and uh, we'll go select this one. We'll do a few at a time, it's more efficient. So I'll make sure I change the resolution before I convert it. So I convert it to th uh, so 32, then convert it to a mesh file export object, mesh 9, file import object. Now I don't know why they're incrementing through the odd numbers either. So, right, okay. You can see in the wireframe they're getting gradually more complex. There's something else to consider as well when we get there. So I'll select 64 for selected convert. Now you can see now that took a little bit longer. File export object mesh 11 so save that. File import object pick up mesh 11 bring that in. Oops don't want to rescale it just want to lift it up above the one that generated it. Right last one file selected 128 convert. Okay <laughs> as you can see I mean uh, this is a fairly fast computer but the conversion process doesn't use multi-core processing like the rendering does so it's down to whatever speed your processor is as its base um, basically I think this is uh, 2.6 gigahertz so I'll export that object that's called it mesh 13 file import object bring up mesh 13 and bear in mind when you bring these in they will all be unsmoothed right so we'll move the camera in so we can get a better look at these in turn so and I'll move the Sun around it's not the most exciting render I know but uh, hopefully it'll just demonstrate what we're trying to achieve here okay right I'll lift it up because I'm interested in the inside of those bowls as well right on the left then eighth level of detail then uh, 1632 6428 so it's just a doubling and you can see here we're getting to a close approximation and much more complex but as I said before we can edit these and smooth them so I'll just go through and smooth each one and you'll see also the overhead in smoothing time increases as well uh, with each one let me see let's do it in this passes at least not too slow right now it's taking a while okay right let's see how the when they're smoothed so uh, you can see even though the smoothing has improved the appearance of all of them there are a few issues on this one you can see that it can't quite work out what shape it's going to be in this odd shadows this one's more reasonable that's getting pretty good and these are well almost as good in every respect as the ones that produce them the shadows sort of give the game away here you can see that this this is facet facetized facetated has facets uh, as is this that one's more or less you can get away with it. a lot of it depends on how close to the camera your subject is just to uh, what level of detail you need so why would you want meshes instead of the Bryce objects that's a good question well you might want to export these for processing in another program that might be uh, a good reason to do that. You might want to get a special effect on these that relies them to be meshes um, and you might have a complex object that you've made through booleans that you could then convert to a more efficient form as a mesh. Um, like I say if you've got these in 3ds format you can take them into say Wings 3D and process them further which is probably what I'd be thinking of doing or um, a UV map them in Wings 3D to get a different uh, texture pattern on. So there's all kinds of reasons why you would want to do this but uh, you just have to be aware that the convert to mesh operation at high levels of detail will make it look like Bryce has hung for a long time and could cause it to crash with complex models and don't have to add too many boolean operations before it starts taking a long time to convert it so there is that to be aware of. These cut um, 
compo these bits that are cut into the surface where one object meets the other, you can't split them in Bryce. You used to be able to, but you can't split them in Bryce, but you can split them in another 3D application. So you can actually split this into two components, which is quite handy. So in Wing 3D, you could separate this inner dish from the outer dish or any other shape that you'd created through the Boolean operation. You could break it off and have another useful component. So there is that element. One thing I will show you before we're done, and I showed it in the selection uh, video as well, but um, no, I was just switching modes. I want to selection 32. Right. It is possible to accidentally create a problem which uh, you can't undo. So I'll set that sphere to positive. Copy and paste. Drag it down. Select the two. Group them and convert them. Right. At this stage you can move this object around. But you've got to bear in mind not only is it two Bryce primitives together, it's also a mesh together and it's sort of in a group. It's not treated in quite in the same way as a group, but if you get a grouped object, right, the, any objects that are grouped together, it doesn't really matter, just make it easy enough to select these two, and group them. When you select a second object that's uh, together, right, you need to select that object, hold the shift key down and click on the other object. Because this one was selected first in a group, you have the ungroup option open. But if you select this on its own, there is no ungroup option. You shouldn't be able to ungroup that. So if you've got something grouped and then select you know, one of these and then you ungroup it, it breaks. You can't get hold of that again. Um, you can go back by using Control Z and undo what you've done, which is handy. But otherwise, there's a slight risk here that you could create a buggy element within your scene. So you don't want to do that. So just cover that aspect of it. Um, uh, the same thing. Uh, when with order of selection of things allows you to tra transfer materials as well. I'll, I'll just mention that, right? So if we had this material and it was red, it could have anything on here, it doesn't matter. So you see I've made that red in the render. Depending what order you select in, so if we select this first and then select the next object along and go into the material lab, it'll remember the first one's material and when you check out they've both been set to red. So if we select this grey one here and then select this red one and then go to the material lab, it's remembered I've selected grey first and as a result moves it along, which is why essentially this uh, happens when you select this one and it's got the ungroup option and then you select this group it remembers it could ungroup that one first and that's why it creates this problem. So anyway, that's that. I don't want to get too deeply involved in that because I was trying to make this sort of the basic example of mesh conversion. We'll move on to um, the export of different object types and also look at what happens to materials when they've been exported at some point in the future. Okay, that's the end of the tutorial.